For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life, eternal life, is wrought by one, and the only, the Lord Jesus Christ. You will face death, and death is not the end of life. The Bible speaks about an afterlife, of a place called heaven, and a place called hell. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. In order to get to heaven where God abodes, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God, to say, I'm going to heaven when I die, has to be on the merit of the Lord Jesus Christ. It cannot be what you think is good. It cannot be your religion. It can't be just this happy place that all people go where they die. That's a lie. Because in order to go to heaven where God is, you have to be holy. You have to be righteous. And the fact is that you will die shows that you are a sinner. For the wages of sin is death. And no sinner goes before God. It's impossible to please a holy God that said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So with man being able to die because of his sin, and the Bible says there is none good, no, not one, there is none righteous, there is none that seeketh after God. And then you got trouble when you think you're going to go to heaven. Yes. There is an age of accountability where if they don't know what sin is before God the Father, they're okay. In other words, you, you, you got a five year old, he steals a cookie. Uh, he knows that mom and dad told him not to, but when he realizes that he has sinned before the Holy God, and has to give an account. Okay, well now, now you're killed. Now you're going to get killed. What about you? You're in a whole new different age. You are in a time, as for you, it would be the Old Testament. The Jews had the law, the sacrifice. If they did what the law prescribed from them did. Yeah. What about the people who are in these remote villages and all that? And they go by the conscience of God. See, every man is born with the fact is there's God. Yeah. No, I have to say that. See, you, you look at you look at the universe. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So you know, this remote village without nothing, then what you think is right. You, you do don't, to, you don't know Jesus. You do this. to the best ability that the light that God's giving you. Okay. And then God's obligated. If, if you really want to do right, God's obligated somehow to get you the word about Jesus. I have heard stories in a remote desert where somewhere a guy was walking through the desert. I mean, sin and nothing. He found the Bible. It's like that's God. That that's one of the one of the missionaries we support. And it's based upon what your heart really wants. If you really want God, He's obligated to show Himself. That's why. That's why there's missionaries all out all over the world. And yeah, there are places missing. I understand. It's all all my people who live good lives. The Bible says, even Solomon said, there's none good. What is the standard of good? Your good is not my good. Yeah, no, I understand. You know what I'm saying? So God says there's one good. Right. That's Jesus Christ. Thank you. All right. And, God, and I, I bless all of yeah, you. Thank you. For my religion, I bless you yep. all. Thank you. Thank you.
for the righteousness of God that lies only in Jesus Christ. We, including myself, are not righteous. We are not right before God. Even a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, I cannot go up to God and say, Hi, God, it's me. Aren't you happy? No. Even I must go up to God and say, God, by the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ, am I here. If we're not for Jesus Christ, I would not be here. See, I, for righteousness, I am depending upon God's Son, Jesus Christ. Dependent upon holiness. I am relying on the finished work of Jesus Christ to save my soul. It is nothing that man can do. The only thing man has done since Adam is reject what God has said. God told Adam, do not eat that fruit. Adam ate the fruit. God tells you through preachers and through evangelists today... Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And you are disobeying God right now. The fact is that you will not come here and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shows you are in rebellion against God. And since you will not believe on Jesus Christ, you are not going to go to heaven. You can't come to God and say, I'm good, and reject Jesus Christ, the better. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. The only man that Christ, that God has given us, is Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the righteous, the sinless. There is no other man, according to Isaiah, that God said, hey, I sought me out a man. I reached out, I looked, and where are the men that can save? And there are none. And that is the reason why we have the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible that I have in my hand right now, the story of Jesus Christ, is because you are a sinner. It is because you will die in your sins. That is the reason for Jesus Christ that you may die without being your sin. You may die by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, by repenting of your sins, and getting back to God by the mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ. In that event, death will be a royalty to you. For if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you will stand in your own condition, condemned and a sinner, and you'll be cast into the lake of fire, which burneth forever. God has set a standard. And that standard is in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only standard. He didn't set upon going to a church. He didn't set a standard upon money. He did not set a standard on what you think in our pea brain. It's not what God has asked us for salvation. It's not what God wants us to think about salvation. It has been laid down about 2,000 years ago upon a hill called Calvary. Upon a hill called Calvary is where God, the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 20, 28, suffered and died and bled because we need a sin atonement. We need a bloody religion, for life is in the blood. You need to come to God by blood. And sinner's blood will not do God justice. In the event that you kill somebody, you will be charged with a sin called murder. God does not want us to do human sacrifice. That is not the way of salvation. God's way of salvation has already been sent by the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary's hill. 
Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again according to the scriptures. Now that is where Jesus separates from religion. Religion doesn't do anything according to the scriptures. Yet when it comes to the finished work of our salvation by God, it's according to the scriptures. Everything that Jesus had done on his life of this planet was according, was prophesied, fulfilled 100%. And yet there are still prophecies right now that have not been fulfilled. And if all the prophecies of the first coming came to effect 100%, you better believe those prophecies about the second coming will come, and I don't know when. And one of those prophecies is, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell. That's a prophecy set out in the Bible. Another prophecy about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you refuse His salvation, that little baby, that little lamb that was born in Bethlehem will come back as a ferocious, angry lion of God, taking vengeance on them that know not God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. See, we may celebrate Jesus as the baby, the sweet, innocent baby, and yet, if you reject that baby that grew up and suffered and died on that cross, you will face the line of the tribe of Judah, of the wrath of the angry Jesus Christ. And you will and have become his enemy. And you do not want to be an enemy of God in Jesus Christ. You will go to hell being God's enemy. And one of the quickest ways to be God's enemy is join a religion. Think that you're good enough. Think that you can do something to outdo the finished work of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, not of works, least any man boast. You can't work your way into heaven. It has already been finished by Jesus Christ. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. Acts 4.12 And that name is Jesus Christ. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That includes your priest. That includes your pastor. That includes you. And as a sinner, what will you do for sins when you need a sinless, pure, holy atonement? That cannot be found in any man of any generation of anywhere since Adam but in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now don't be fooled. Because the Apostle Paul has told us in the Scriptures that there are another Jesuses. And they are a dime a dozen. And you've got to have and must have the biblical Jesus. Religion has a Jesus that will confuse you. A religious Jesus will have the real Jesus proclaim to you, depart from me, I never knew you. But Lord, I ate you every week, I drank your blood every week. 
Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, I am so good. There are none good. There is none good. No, not one. That kind of rules it out when God places on the table. Hey, first of all, don't come to me because you're good. Because I'm telling you, there are none good. But Lord, I never killed anybody. But you probably thought about it. The Bible says in Matthew, For whosoever looketh upon a woman and lust after her in his heart, has already committed adultery. you got to realize in the eyes of God, you don't have to do. you just got to think about it. You are guilty by your thoughts alone. And then we'll talk about what you do actuality. And the Bible says that our heart is wicked and deceitful and above all things. And then we're going to come to God and say, we are so good. And you don't even address the fact is about your thought life. Some of you right now are not thinking too well of this messages that come out every week. And you don't realize that when you say in your heart and in your pea brain, I wish he shut up, I wish he go away, that guy's a fool, and every other four-letter word that you can think about, you are now blaspheming God in the Word of God, and God will hold you to it. Your thoughts are just as much as sins as doing something. You can hold a water gun to someone's head and want to kill that person, and you can't do it with a water gun, but if you want to kill that person, you've already been charged with murder. And you don't need to pull a gun with a, with a trigger. Your mind and your heart is alienated against God. Because the fact is, if you were not alienated from God, you'd be up here right now saying, what must I do to get right with God? But you got your own ideas in that pea brain. You've had what God will agree with you. And God's not going to agree with you because He has set in the Scriptures. God has told us, writing it down, in writing, what He expects and what He wants from us. And you're going to come along and you're going to say, well, if I think this, God is going to change His mind. And God is holier than you. And God is mightier than you. And God knows more than you. And God is God and you are not. And that's another sin of Americans today. They think they're God. They think because they're Americans and, you know, we're the best, we're the most great. You are a coal in hell. That's what you are. No matter what country you come from, no matter what background you are, no matter if you're black, white, yellow, green, you are a coal in the hell of fire unless you repent of the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved today, now. Because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed this afternoon. Death happens, and we don't know when it's going to happen. Keep your voice Thank clear, you. my friend. Thank you. The Apostle Peter says, Jesus told me that I'm going to die by crucifixion. And it happened. They crucified Peter and said upside down on a cross. But what, what Peter did not know is, when is it going to happen? At what moment is it going to happen? You don't know when you're going to die. There is only one man from Adam to the last man that knows when he was going to die. He was going to die Abed 14, the 14th of Abed at 6 p.m. Now how did that man know when, what day he's going to die, what month he was going to die, and what hour he was going to die? 
scripture said that Jesus died according to the scriptures. You try that. You try that walking across the street with Florida drivers. You're pressing your luck right there. It'd be worse to end up underneath a car in Florida hearing the gospel and then wake up in eternity in hell. It would be really remarkable and pain torture to have your final words of the gospel of Jesus Christ and not believe on him. Imagine forever and ever being haunted of hell, this terrible loud voice, and you did not believe on Jesus Christ. That'd be a terrible thing. Anytime going into hell in the lake of fire. Anytime is a rotten thing because you don't have to. You do not have to go to hell. And God does not have to put you into hell. Because he has said, I am long-suffering. I am not willing that any should perish. I want you to go into all the world. I want you to preach the gospel to them. Because I don't want them to go. And you will not listen to what God has to say. And then he is now obligated to throw you into hell. Because you will not do what God told you to do. Don't you dare blame God for throwing you in hell. Because you were the stupid, ignorant person. Not God. preach love. The love of God is that he sent us to tell you about Jesus Christ. That is the love of God. Hell is completely optional. You don't have to go. But you're stupid and you're stubborn and you're American and you will not listen to a preacher. I'm calling you God forsaking idiots stupid for not believing a simple easy gospel. But you rather trust something else. You rather take your chances with something else. You rather tell Jesus, hey Jesus, he says you're God. But me, I'm more important than you. What I can do, Jesus, is a lot better than what you've done. And that's what you're telling Jesus when you reject his finished atonement. You are saying, Jesus, I am better than you. My works are better than your works. I will see you at the judgment, Jesus, and we will find the fact is that my way was better than yours, Jesus. And the Bible says to that, prepare to meet thy God. And the Bible says, out of the mouth of Jesus himself, Jesus will proclaim to you in your foolishness, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Wow. The Jesus that you boast more about of yourself doesn't even know who you are. Now that's condemnation. That's damnation. Where God that made the Pluto, whether it's a planet or not a planet, I haven't checked the books today, but the God that made Pluto has in his life book, the last book of life, he has my name written down by his finished atonement. And for you, he'll say, I never knew you. When he tells us about a man that is in hell, Luke 16, he doesn't even give us the name of the man, but he tells us that a beggar who had sores, who the dogs licked, we told everything about that man who's poor, broke, and destitute, and a dog licked his sores, we are told that his name is Lazarus. But in the man that went to hell, we don't know what his name was. You see what happened, Mr. Fame? Mrs. I gotta get my name everywhere. Look how great I am. Look how wonderful I am in my high school. 
Look how great I am in the business field. You don't even have a name in hell and you don't even have a position. You're just a rich man. You're just a poor man. You're just a man burning in hell. And you don't need to. You can get out of hell this morning. Where you can call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. We will open up a Bible here. There are three of us here. We will open the Bible. And we will show you how to get saved. By the Bible. We won't give you standards. We won't set up a table. We won't give you the praise. But we'll have you sit down with God, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as Isaiah 118 says. Come now. <coughs> Let us reason together. You see, the Bible says that God wants you to come to Him. He wants you to come to Him as a sinner that you are. And you are a sinner. Oh boy, you are a sinner. Oh no, I'm not. Yes, you are. Because you've rejected Jesus Christ. That's the sin that puts men into hell. If you were really saved... You'd be over here right now. You'd be in one of these islands. The Bible said, With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You'd be like, Hey, there are other people worshiping Jesus, our Savior. Let me come join them. But if you deny Him, the Bible says, He'll deny you the right to that reign. There's nothing more, there is nothing greater than Jesus Christ to boast, to preach, to talk about, to be for all Daytona Beach. The name of Jesus Christ ought to be lifted up. We're here in Daytona Beach, Daytona 500, and a lot of those great guys that go around the circle, left-hand turns, they're so great. Yeah, but they get in accidents. If they're so great, they would have a complete lifetime of driving and no accidents. If they were great. And yet, I have a man's name, Jesus Christ, to be boasted of never, ever sinned a day of his life and never did nothing wrong. Ever. And that name you don't want to lift up. That name you don't want to rejoice in. That name you don't want to worship the name of Jesus Christ. You had to shut that name up. You had to stop that name. A name that even President Trump does not use, but uses the name religion. That can't save you. It's got to be by the name of Jesus Christ. And I don't mean as cussing. Jesus' name is so holy and wonderful, some of you use his name as a cuss word. You bang your knuckles and you call upon Jesus Christ, but not in righteousness. And that very same Jesus... If you were to call on His name and repent of your sins before you die, you can be absent from the body and present with the Lord upon death. Now the name of Jesus Christ is not going to stop your problems. It There will be no relief in hell. None at all. And yet the sweet relief of 
table spread before me, surely goodness and mercy are upon the Lord Jesus Christ, a new believing on Him, being saved. God has set forth a way. And that way is the Lord Jesus Christ. And choosing to ignore the preacher. And I don't call myself a preacher. Everyone around me will come up to me and say, preacher, preacher, so I guess that's what I am. Ignoring the preacher will not make it go away. When we pack up and leave, will not make hell go away. You have heard the word of God. And you are found wanting. And to be found of God is to repent and come to Jesus Christ and get right and get eternal life by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Because you will die. And after this comes the judgment. And the judgment is when you take your breath and you open your eyes to Jesus, you have been judged right. Or if you open up your eyes and you are in torments, you have been found wanting. You have been found unrighteous by God. And a gentleman asked me today, well, what if they never heard? It's a good question. But the question is, you have heard. You are hearing. And you are without excuse, especially those that are here week after week, as we are here week after week. That person selling you the produce are definitely, definitely without excuse standing before God. Imagine making all that money while you hear God's word and then end up broken naked in hell. End up in hell because you do not want to trust God's Son. You do not want to believe and be right. There's two ways. There's the way of life and righteousness, Jesus Christ. There is a perishing damnation, condemnation by anything else but Jesus. You can do it your way. I advise you not to. Or you can do it the way of Jesus Christ and be saved. That's the way I, I tell you to go. You will die. And you will face judgment. Let it be on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ and His merits. Death is coming. Death is more sure than taxes. There are so many ways to die. And one of those ways has been implanted in you when you were born. And God only knows when that day is coming. 
There are ways you can even short that lifespan, but that's not the point right now. The point is you're going to die. And God, knowing when that date and that time is, He has sent forth His saved Christians. He has told us to go in all the world and preach the gospel to the lost. And I'm sorry as far as the world of Christianity, I seem like an oddball, but they're the oddballs. His judgment's coming, death is coming. And God has set forth to warn you today. And any time He's merciful and graceful enough to have us, Lord willing, come here each Saturday. One of these Saturdays, it won't be here. Maybe your life, maybe the Lord will move us, I don't know. But right now, God has said, go. And tell them about the gospel. Christ died for your sins according to the scripture. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures that you may be saved. That's the love message of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who knows, way this country is rejecting God, maybe the farmer's market will come to an end. When God may just say, hey, drought, no rain, I'll call up my bugs, and I'll get rid of that fruit that you see more precious than my Jesus. Read your Bible. Famine is a judgment upon the land by God for rejecting what He is said to do. Last week, Florida was on fire. California is facing droughts. Tennessee Valley is getting too much rain. a shame to have to end the farmer's market ministry because of drought and famine because you won't listen to the preacher at the farmer's market. Wouldn't it be funny for you to go crying to God, God, I don't have no more money. Well, I had you breathe that preacher in my word. I made it better, but I had to get your attention. You say, will God call for a famine in that? I think God should have put a famine on this country a long time ago. I think God should have ruined the economy of America a long time ago. When they began to tell him, get his word out of the school, get his word out of the courtroom, reject God, to say that Islam is a religion of freedom, I think God should have rejected America a long time ago, but God's long-suffering and not willing that any should perish, but that you come to the knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ to be your Savior. That's the long-suffering of God. That why we ain't broken down as a country yet. You better thank God that I'm not God. God's got patience. He's long-suffering. He's full of love. I would be a fool to say that I'm good. I would be a fool to say I'm not a sinner. I am a sinner. And so are you. And God knows that and has sent forth His Son for you to be saved. And yes, I can say God has sent me here to speak to you. Mark chapter 16, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. You look like the world. You look like hell-bound sinners. You look like you need a savior.
You look like you need the gospel. You look like you need God. And God says, Isaiah 1.18, come now. Let us. God wants you to step out and come and hear the word of God. You don't realize what God is doing reaching out to you. You know, Noah was doing this when he was building that ark to the world. He was preaching to the world. The Bible calls him a preacher of righteousness. Before you say, well, what you're doing is not in the Bible. You better believe it is. When Noah heard the judgment of that flood was coming, he preached to the people. When Lot heard that the judgment of Sodom is coming, he preached to the people. I know hell is coming for you and I'm preaching to the people. I know you're a candidate for death because you were born. I know you're a candidate for hell because you won't believe. I know there's hope for you to be saved on Jesus Christ. That's why I'm here. I know that Jesus Christ, the seed, can be planted in your heart and can sprout. Now, I'm not so foolish enough to think that the seed can be also devoured by Satan. And I'm not so foolish enough to believe that the world with the seed can be enthroned and entangled with thorns and deceitful of riches before my eyes. And in your rejection of God, you don't realize what I see with my eyes amongst you. You make the Bible more real. I see Mark chapter 4 played out in front of my eyes. And you don't even know, and you can know. You can know that the words that we preach are the words of life. Yea, though the, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have no fears. And I know when that death comes, it's absent from the body and present with the Lord. How are you doing? I mean, how are you 100% doing with death? 100%. I mean, I don't want to go in a fire. I don't want to be tortured. I don't want to have pain. But as far as death itself, it's sweet. It's wanting. It's desired. And yet it's needful for me to be here. That you may hear the gospel. How are you with death? That doctor's appointment this week you're going to have. What if the doctor said... There's absolutely nothing we can do. Huh? What if that test result, that doctor's going to proclaim your money, medicine, that a surgery, can't do nothing. It's terminal. And when that death comes, well, where will you be? Otherwise, the Bible speaks as, as soon as you close your eyes of death, they're opened again. But in hell, you're not going to see anything. It's dark. But oh, if you're to believe on Jesus, when you open up your eyes, I can't even fathom that, that situation to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. I can't even fathom. 
I can't even fathom what a life will be without pain. I can't fathom a life without people who don't believe on Jesus. A life without commerce. A life with pure holiness and no more sin. A life of no more aches and pains. And yet hell is the complete opposite. You won't need a pharmacist in heaven, but you'll wish you had one in hell. There are no painkillers in hell. The painkiller is Jesus Christ and receiving Him by faith. Jesus Christ will end the pain of hell. And to think about the pain that Jesus Christ suffered and died that paid for our sins. The brutality that Jesus God suffered so that you could be saved and you reject Him. You're going to stand in the hands of an angry God one day. I don't know if Jesus is going to, what he's going to do at your judgment. But I don't know what the power of God is. But I would think it would be totally misbelieving, incomparable to to, uh, to gain the knowledge of if you that rejected Jesus Christ as your Savior and Jesus Christ to play back the final day of his life to give you opportunity of salvation because the Bible speaks about Jesus for your sins was beaten he was bruised they say when he died on that cross, unlike Mel Gibson, that you couldn't even tell that that was a human. That Jesus' back looks like some of the some of the ground that this fruit and vegetables come from, plowed and furrowed. Jesus Christ was a bloody, pussy mess when he died on that cross and he suffered and died for you and your sins. Isaiah 53. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world was beaten far more than any human has ever been beaten. And you choose to reject that love. You deserve hell. And yet God is long-suffering and patient. And he says, go to them and preach to them and tell them again. And again. Some people are hearing it for the first time. But some people, they, they got to keep hearing it. Because they won't get right. And you accuse us of no love, but you don't realize what the love of God is. God can end your breathing now and put you where you deserve. But he says, you know, let him listen to that preacher one more time. Let him think about it one more time. Some of you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to live your lives hearing this preaching and, and what God's doing in your heart. You know what Jesus told Paul? It's hard to kick against the bricks. I'm, I'm bugging you, am I, Paul? And I am just making your life miserable, Paul, am I? Yes, you are. And Paul got saved. Some of you right now hearing this gospel may have a, a terrible life right now because God's working on you. I hope it's the salvation. It's hard to kick against the bricks, the Bible says. Some of you have never heard the gospel before. You're coming here like, what the heck is that guy doing? 
That guy's preaching the gospel. That Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. We stand here in the name of Jesus Christ that you may be saved. That without Jesus Christ you will go to hell. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the gospel. That's the way of salvation. We don't have a money table up here. We're not selling anything. We don't have no baked goods. We have Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You're not going to find this message on many radio stations and TV. But this message is not profitable for the wallet. This message is about eternal life. And that eternal life is set upon Jesus Christ, the righteous, the Son of God, which take away the sins of the world. I need to get me a tractor trailer. What is your excuse for not coming to God? I like to know. I like you to just walk up here and say, Preacher, this is more important than your message. Preacher, I exalt this more than Jesus Christ. Come on up. I'll give you the microphone so you can tell the world what's more important than Jesus. I'm giving you an invitation. I think this is twice I've done this. Come on up and tell what's more important than Jesus. And I'm not doing it to be meanful. I'm not doing it in any room. What do you think is more important than Jesus? I'm sorry, but you know, when I that first week I heard the gospel. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I figured three days. I said, hey, I gotta get somebody to tell me what I need to do. I figured Sunday morning I heard the message. I think by Tuesday, Wednesday night, I gotta do something. I need to speak to somebody. As far as I know, I did not fight the gospel message, just had to wait for somebody to come. And I see a group of people that, oh well, he's going to be done, he's going to go home, he's going to shut up, and you'll be damned. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. There's no greater gift, there's no greater way than Jesus Christ. There is nothing better than Jesus, nothing sweeter than Jesus. And with the sweetness of Jesus, you don't need insulin. He's just so too good for us. And God said, that's the way, that's the truth, that's my only, that is your only hope, Jesus Christ. You won't come to God with anything else. There is nothing else. And what you think and what you have is not Jesus, it's a failure. You are a failure without Jesus Christ. You have failed in the eyes of God. And don't listen to man, because man don't know nothing. Our Creator, our being, knows it all. He's the one that made us. I got more faith in the one that made me than anybody who's trying to support me.
For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that's you, whosoever believes on Him should not perish. He knows you're going to die. He knows, God knows without Christ you will be in hell. And He doesn't want you. The very fact that He tells His saints, go and tell them, Tell them about my son. I don't care about the other idiots out there that say give money, do this, do that. They, they don't know nothing. Well, you go tell them about my son. You tell them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and they shall be saved. You tell them that my son said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. No man comes unto me, God speaking, but by me. Life is in Christ. Death is in religion. And then there's a the possibility that the church will be raptured today. And you will never hear the message again. And if the church is raptured while you're living, the message I'm preaching will be made void. God's coming for His bride, the church. And there's one access into the church, and that's by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It's not a membership of an earthly church. It's a membership into the body of Christ by the Calvary, by the tomb, and then by the empty tomb. Man gets into the church by the finished work of Jesus Christ. And one day the church will be gone. It may happen in front of your eyes. And if the rapture happened right now, you'd probably applaud and have a good old time. You'd say, yeah! But we come here to, because we don't want to see your damnation. We don't want to see your condemnation. We do not want you to go to hell. And there's nothing else we can do for your soul but to preach the gospel. All we can do is tell you what, what to do. are is like a teenage child. Mom and dad tells you to do something, but you know so much better. You think you know it all. I know, I got a teenage daughter. And that's an illustration I would give you. I, I, I'm the, the parent, and you're the teenage children, and you just, oh, they're an idiot. I know everything. And you don't. You don't have the foggiest idea what the eternal life is. You don't have the figures idea what the wrath of God would be. Maybe your preacher, your church is too pansy wansy. Now, if you don't hear this message in your church that you attend, there's no love in your church. And yet one day, whatever gravity is, God for His church is going to say, defile it and come home. And I'm going to fly without wings. And you know what's sorry about the day of the rapture? There's something sorry about it. Unlike the airlines, there's no overbooking. No one's going to say, can you give up your spot because we overbooked the rapture. 
And when I look out and I see you all rejecting God, it's like, it's your fault. Many shall go the broad way which leads to destruction. And few that go the gate of righteousness, Jesus Christ. The straight gate. I'll tell you, somebody that comes up with a prosperity gospel, I've never preached on the street. Joe Olstein has never preached his silliness on the street to get followers. Joyce Myers has never preached to a crowd, a crowd of unsaved believers. Because if they were to get what we get by, with the gospel, they give it up in a moment, twinkle of an eye. Because they don't have the gospel. They don't have the words of life. They got a fat pocketbook or wallet. And the Bible says there are people, men and women, who are for gainsaying, for filthy liquor. We're here that you might be saved. That you may get eternal life by Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. We're here that you may hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and believe. And the sweet fellowship we can have in heaven, glorifying Jesus Christ as Lord, God, and Savior. If one of you at any time were to get saved by these messages, when we get to heaven, you'll be hoo ha and hallelujah. Because you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and that will be wonderful. That would be great. That would be your righteousness on all eternity. And the Bible says those that do go before God's throne, those that are saved by the Lamb of God, it's forever glorious. It's forever praise in the one that died for us. As far as hell, the Bible says tor torments Tormented, tormenting. Oh, if I had only a sweet relief. If I only had a little drop of water. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. upon Jesus. Because he's seated in high places at the right hand of the Father. And he's the blessed hope. And he's coming. Ready or not, he's coming. I may die before he comes, but he's coming. He is the only way to get you out of hell. He's the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. He's the joy. He's the love. He's the peace. He's the long-suffering. He's patience. He is the Lamb of God which take away the, the sin of the world. He's the water of life to quench that thirst. He's the bread of life to feed upon. He is the light of the world so you don't stub your toes. He is the Word of God that abideth forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. You will survive as long as Jesus survives. That's eternal. Are you laden with burdens? Are you heavy down? Jesus says, come on to me. Take his yoke. For 
God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Death is coming. I don't care how old you are, death is coming and we don't know when. And the answer to death is Jesus Christ. Death insurance has been paid by Jesus. The premium is the blood of God, Acts 20, 28. 